Wouldn't take too long, will it, sir? Watch your piss. Already, my lads, sir. Gone through all the law. Does he have a return? Look, I, I don't know. I sent my propositions, Miller. They're already hopefully before your lordships. Yeah. And the what head? What head? We also have printed. No, Mr. We don't have that. If you can have some, your junior, email it to the court master. We'll immediately get it. We have circulated it, Miller, but we'll give you the print. Nothing. Not on the. It's been just sent half an hour before. Just, just sent. Oh. Just sent. I've got for physical copies. No, let's do it on the electronic form, yeah. all of us. Uh, all right. Give it to them. Mr. Sibyl, what happened to your uh, iPad? I have it. <laughs> well, I have it, and I'm going to I'm going to honor Malat, my commitment to your lordship. We had to do in this field at least, Malat. Do it in other courts too, besides courts. No, it's Mark. a temporary measure. Is it a temp? Is it a proverbial elephants? You know. Task? No, no, Malat. In fact, I have been uh, assiduously, Malat, trying to learn on a daily basis, Malat, and. Frank, and, and I've managed Mullers quite well. Mullers, I'll start off by saying, Mullers, that I was very worried, Mullers, at the outset of the hearing, when on the other side it was said that Parliament is not going to do anything about it. We don't expect Parliament to recognize this particular right. And therefore, we urge your lordships to give us a declaration. Because I'm afraid that that's a very dangerous proposition. Sorry, will you repeat yourself, Mr. Sir? I'm sorry? Will you repeat yourself? Well, it's, it was said, Malaj, at the outset, that we don't expect, expect Parliament to move forward. We don't expect Parliament to pass such a law. And therefore, your Lordship should do it. And I said, Muller, that's a very dangerous route to take. Any law of this nature, Muller, which is pursuant to a tectonic, tectonic shift, as I said, Muller, in societal values requires public discourse, which includes discourse in Parliament, it includes discourse outside Parliament, within the assemblies, outside society. And therefore, Malats, a declaration by itself on the premise that Parliament is not likely to pass a law, Malaj, is, as I said, a wrong step forward. But Malaj, let me go to the heart of the matter. When your lordships were dealing with Nalsa, you got it? It's a dangerous route to take, Mullahs, because a declaration by your lordships will close the debate in Parliament. There will be no scope of debate once you declare. One, that it's a fundamental right. Two, it has to be recognized. That's, well, with, with, with the greatest respect, well, it's something that your lordship should be cautious about. Nothing more than that. Parliament can overrule a declaration also, no? Sorry? 
Parliament can overrule a declaration. No, no, but as your lordship knows that once your lordships have declared, Parliament cannot overrule it. I hope Malaz, that date is not that stage has not come for Parliament to overrule what your lordships decide. I'll be on the other side when that happens, Malaz. But Malaz, let's let's Malaz, get go to the heart of the matter. In Nalsa, your lordships decided sexual identity. Sorry. In Nalsa, Malat, your lordship decided. Nalsa, you say. Yes, sexual identity, nothing more than that, of transgenders. In the privacy judgment, your lordships decided upon the contours of privacy, both in the private space and the public space. Can you say that again? Nalsa was a declaration. Yes. Identity. There was a declaration. Identity. Yes, exactly. On sexual identity. In, in... in privacy, you decided on the space for privacy, both the private space and the public space. That even the public privacy must be protected. In Navtej, you decided on decriminalization. But conceptually, you say the third one is slightly different. Yes. Because it is only a decriminalization which is statutory. Correct. Correct. What you are today deciding are two things. Sexual unions. and recognition by the state of sexual unions. That's the issue, Malaz. None of these issues, Malaz, were looked upon, decided, contemplated, thought through in either of the three judgments. So any Malaz references made in the context of those three particular issues decided in those three must can't will be taken as concepts which must be a for sure i accepted by your lordships right so first you have to decide are they a separate sexual identity and in the ultimate analysis Malad, my answer will be yes The next step, should they be recognized by the state? The answer is not through a declaration. This broadly, Malat? is going to be my submission before your lordships. And Malaz, I respectfully, Malaz. Just a little clarification. Your first question was, are they a separate sexual identity? And you said yes. Yes. Uh, second, should they be recognized by the state? And your answer was not through a declaration. Uh, uh, no, no, they sexual identity, yes. Yes. Right, your, once your lordship recognizes it, then the question arises, sexual identity as a sexual union. 
Uh, no, I just had a little clarification because, you know, I'm just putting yes. the submission down. Should they, second point was, should they be recognized by the state? Yes. To which you said, not through a declaration. Not right? through a declaration. Now, when you say, mm -hmm. should Not they, through a legislation, I said. Not through a legislation. No, 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 they can only be done through a legislation. Yes, yes, that's right. That's I took it down. Like yeah. You are basically, a, you're advocating a Scalia Roberts approach. Yes. Right. Now, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Said, uh, Mr. Sibyl, when you said, should they be recognized? That's what my that, that sexual identity, sexual which is separate from sexual union. union. Ah, sexual union. Union. Not sexual identity. No, no, identity, Malad, I, I want your lordship to give that declaration. So that sexual, that word, they, we'll just modulate it. Yes. The sexual union. Union, word. yes. Now, the question then arises, is this sexual union a marriage? That's the, Malad, that's what we've been debating, Malad, for the last an hour or so. It was the third. Is this sexual union akin to a marriage? If it is akin to a marriage, is it founded in any provision of the Constitution? Next question. And that the third, okay. for it to result in certain rights, it can only be done through recognition by the state, through legislation. There can't be a declaration to that effect. Well, when your lordships ask constitutional uh, perspective the constitutional lexicon yes when you say can't yes the can't has to also fit into some constitutionally recognized prohibition yes which is that, that it's a regulatory exercise of rights ultimately have to be regulated no, regulation can only be done through law no no that's right yes that's part of regulation we are on a more fundamental part. yes declaration yes well, we have now evolved to the extent of understanding what are constitutionally manageable standards, yes. existence of it, non-existence of it, matters which are not to be gone into the court, by, by the court, etc. Where would you locate that? When you say a prohibition is prohibited. Well, as I tell you, I tell, moment your lordships decide that this, is a, this union is a marriage, in what context will you decide that, Mullah? Ultimately, what is a marriage? The marriage is only a union. No, forget the fact, forget the issue of whether the court should declare this to be a marriage. Yes. We are now on the core issue as whether the court can issue a declaration. That it's a marriage. No. No, no that it's no. a union. The, the court can issue a declaration. A declaration, Quay, what, Muller, that it's a sexual union. That's all, Muller. It yeah, can't be doing anything more than right. that. Right. See, this, there is no declaration in vacuo or vacuum. No, Malad, sure. there can be. Malad. Of course, you're right. But see, that the court has its, in, in, in its repertoire a right to declare right from 1960, Justice Subarao, I think that Cochini onwards yes. is there. Question is, what is that declaration we have to issue? It will, will it be marriage or not marriage or something? No, that's right. That's, that is the question that, Malad, I'll try and address your lordships on, but that's the really core issue. So the court has, in the past, issued declarations, for instance, declarations which postulate that the implementation of the declaration requires legislation being enacted yeah. by parliament yes the right to a clean environment for instance yes uh, it, the implementations ultimately for parliament to health. say the health education which eventually pr the right to primary education fry found uh, expression the right to education act. yes absolutely or the it right became a constitutional food. right thanks to a certain declaration the I right agree to food, which eventually resulted in the enactment of a legislation i'm with you on that uh, therefore you, at its core as a constitutional precept to say that the court cannot issue a declaration would not be correct equally we take your point that though don't go into an area where you declare a right to marry That's because right. That, Mr. that was the intent. The that, was the, that was the intent. That was the intent. That was the intent. Let's first of all define what marriage is before we move forward. And my yes, lord, justice, like but your lordship, Malad, let's let's look into that. Ultimately, what is marriage? Forget about Malad's the law of 1955. Act. Forget all that, Malad. Marriage ultimately is a union. 
It's a union of two persons. It's a sociological phenomenon which deals thus far with heterosexuality. Thus far. It's a union, Mullet. Even if the 1955 Act were not there, Mullet, it's recognized within and without as marriage. When I say within, by two people, pay that union and without by society. So there are two elements to it. Recognition within, recognition without. Could you just elaborate on that a little bit? Well, let's, for example, I mean, as I said, in the absence of a law, in the absence of a law, this union of two people with all the sacramental vows is accepted by a large majority of society for thousands of years. That's the recognition without. Yes, that's the recognition without, right? And that's essential. That's essential. So the recognition without, according to you, then is the social recognition. Is the social recognition. Thus far, it applied to only heterosexual couples. But it's still a marriage. But a marriage which has gained acceptability over centuries. The union between sexual, uh, se sexual union between sexually people who are homosexuals or whatever is still a union. You can't say it's not a union. They have a sexual identity, which is separate. It's involuntary. Involuntary? In the sense, well, it's involuntary in the sense that this is, these are their sexual... Uh, uh, it's not a matter of choice. Yes. That's what they call as ascriptive. Yes. Yeah. See, it's, in that... They have no they're... choice in the matter. That's how it is, physically. It could be said of both, always, in that sense. Sorry? It could be said of both sets. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> but that, that apart... It is voluntary in the sense that they choose. Of course, I, I don't mean. Like, just like in this. The case. manifestation is involuntary. Otherwise, it's of course a voluntary union. I don't mean that, Malas. It's consensual. It's voluntary. Your sexual orientation may not necessarily lead you to a union. That's right. It may not. It may not. That's what I'm saying, Malas. We are. So therefore, we are not we're talking about sexual orientation here, which is what I was started with. We're talking about a sexual union, and we are trying to give that a name. That's what we're trying to do, Malat. That's why you're asked to ask the question, what's a marriage? Right. Right? You give it a name. Now, they may consider that this is my marriage. Who can stop anybody? How can anybody stop them from considering that this is a marriage? Nobody can stop them. There are two people who decide that they want to live together. They live together for 10 years, 15 years. They say, it's, yeah, I'm married to him. The moment you say now without, you must recognize it, comes the problem. You may find it in 21, you may find it in 14, you may find it anywhere, Malas. You may not find it in the Constitution at all. According to me, it's part of your right to be and to live as you please without interference from the outside world. It's part of privacy. And according to the recognition without, if the court were to be invited to give a declaration of recognition without, yes, that would amount to an imposition on others. That's that's the point. That's the point. Well, that, that's the core issue before your lordship. That's really the core issue. Uh, if I could just translate it in a very colorfully, maybe not so. It's like drawing a blank. Yeah. It's like firing a blank. So, which means that you allow it, but uh, outside, the without, there is no, no acceptance, there is no... Recognition. That's really the heart of the but problem. The counterpoint to that is, there may or may not be, but that lends us dignity in our own eyes. That lends us acceptance among our society. 
Yes. And then the society without, to that extent, limited extent, among our parents, among those people who are willing to accept us. That is the, a point you may have to deal with. True, true, true. Malaz. That's certainly an issue that your lordships will have to consider. But the point that I'm making is, Malaz, at the moment, what are they asking? They say under the Special Marriage Act, the rights given to heterosexual couples should be given to us. That's what they're asking. That's their ask, Malaj. Nothing short of that. And that's what your lordship is considering. Mr. Uh, Mr. Sibyl, we've, when we opened the discourse, we confined it, of course, we confined them to the Special Marriage Act with the idea in which we still maintain that we are excluding the whole gamut of personal law yes. from the debate. Yes. But we're not really confined only to the contours of the Special Marriage Act in deciding the broader constitution. That I know, 14, I'm going to come to that, Malas. That's the other issue. Is it discrimination? That's so yeah. when we locate the nature yeah. of marriage... Yeah. The institution of the marriage. We are not sure. really then confined only to the special. I agree, Mother. So therefore, statutory contours. That's I agree entirely. Therefore, the lordships are also considering whether there is discrimination under 14 or not, and therefore, can you then say that this is discriminatory? But where does it go from there? That's the next question. If you find it discriminatory, where do you go from there? That's an even more difficult task, Mother. First, to find that it's discriminatory, that itself is, a, is an issue, Malas. Because we are talking about separate sexual identities and unions. Let me continue. Yes, yeah, we'll continue. Mr. Sibyl, roughly how long will you take just to have a... I won't take much time, Malas. I'm basically, I'm not going to trouble your lordship with all the judgments. I'm just taking the dialogue forward, Malas, so that your lordship knows... Well, now we've seen the judgments. We really, we'd like some uh, assistance at the intellectual level now. Yeah. And we just... Uh, forget yeah. the judgments unless there's something somebody else. That's can correct. Say. That's correct. That's and what I'll do. After Mr. Sibyl, who will be taking over? Mr. Data will be. And after Mr. Yes, Data, after Mr. Please, Mr. Jay Mr. Said, so I sure I will be arguing. All right. Then just about half an hour, not yeah, after, uh, So we, uh, Mr. Data, Mr. Data, Ms. Bhatti, Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. Manisha Lavkumar, and then Mr. Jay Said. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. So we would tentatively. You know, this is not the sort of a bench which wields a guillotine, but tentatively we'll keep it for lunch tomorrow for this side. I think so. I think so. I think so. So that then the other side will yes. conclude, conclude their rejoinder by tomorrow afternoon. That's okay. fine. Deeply obliged. Obliged. Mr. Solicitor, you want to ask me? Mr. Solicitor, um, Justice Bhatt has a very good idea. Mr. Solicitor, you uh, emphasize the general part of your designation and ration the time between your team now. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Mr. So we were talking about acceptance, Malaz, just before the break. Now, acceptance is also at three levels. The first is the acceptance by the two individuals themselves, right? That's the seminal level. Then is acceptance by the family. In many cases, there may be acceptance. In some cases, there may not be acceptance or vice versa. I don't know. I don't have the data. And by society. And then, Malad, it's a th concentric circles which has three Malads, like public order, your lordship. Yes, remember. That's what he's <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah, Raman, yeah. so there are three concentric circles. Yeah. Now, who is to investigate that? This is the problem, Malad. This is the issue. Who is to look at that? And there we need the aid, Malads, of all kinds of data, opinions, conversations, discourses, debates. If you look at the quintessential form of marriage, which is heterosexual couples, why has it stood the test of time, Malaz? Because at all three levels, there is acceptability. Now, you may call it by any name. 
in, a, in the Hindu custom, if you, you know, go around the fire at the end of it, it's complete. In Islam, it's different. In Parsis, it's different. So you rec society recognizes that union and gives it a name. You don't need the constitution for it, quite frankly, Malat. It is one of those inalienable rights, the right to a union. That inalienable right inheres in them also. That right to that union, Malat. You may call it what by whatever name. But if you want to, Malat, equate it to a heterosexual union, you need all the elements which go into the heterosexual union being recognized. And if you look at the institution of marriage as an organic evolution, as an organic evolution of custom and usage, you will realize that its roots in here in societal acceptance, along with concepts of societal standards and morality. Now, that concept of morality may change. Societal standards may change as they are changing. Both societal standards and morality is changing. But it's, it inheres in that. Why can't, Mullahs, you marry your son's widow? It's nothing to do with blood relationship. It's something to do with standards which the state recognizes as state interest. Some the state imposes. Yeah, some state others, imposes. Others the state recognizes because it's inherent to order. Correct. I agree entirely. Entirely. Well, supposing I were to say it's a matter of choice that I want to have, I want three of us want to live together and we want to marry. Well, nothing, nothing wrong with it. I mean, conceptually, there's nothing wrong with it. Where will you place it? Will you call it a marriage? Amala, Justice Roberts asked this question yes. of a pluralistic relationship to counsel who were arguing. And he said there was no answer. He said that time has not yet come. So choice by itself is a slippery slope. Because it is elastic. That again. Three people want to live together. That's right. It is elastic. Choice is elastic, Malat. No, three, three, there are societies. Yes, they do. minuscule, but there are polyandrous. Of course, of course, of course. I mean, that, that perhaps is not there. That's but correct. it is there in our society. In our no, society. I agree, but therefore, does it get recognition in the form of law? The question is that, Malat, that's the question before your lordships. I am not, Malat, I am not being moralistic about it. No, no, without being moralistic, yes, I'm not. recognize it's, that. It's the reality, it's the reality. It's the reality. So when you base it on choice, it becomes somewhat difficult. And if you base it on equality, it's even more difficult. Now, let's let me assume that Parliament were to pass a law tomorrow in respect of same-sex unions. What if that law is challenged saying that you are treating unequal, you are treating equals unequally?
Will you strike it down? You won't. That's the answer to the question. 14 requires equals being treated equally. Equal work for equal pay for equal work. You can't equate a practice that has, has the sanction of society for hundreds and thousands of years with a... With You can't essentially equate these two unions, Malaj, in one class. You can't essentially do that. Therefore, this debate of procreation, love, trust, all that, Malaj, is really beside the point. Just as you can't deal with um, uh, transgenders in the same class as same sex, can't deal with that as same class as heterosexual. So you'll have to have separate, Malaj, regimes. To what extent will you recognize? To what extent you won't recognize? Whether you will give them some civil rights? But I think the starting point of that is recognition of their sexuality, of their sexual identity. It is my request that this court declares that. They have a separate sexual identity. What will happen? What will happen is what happened in Kedan. Then, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sibyl, if we declare their sexual identity, as you yeah. uh, justifiably you are saying that we must, then the court may also then have to mm. contemplate what are the rights which are not concomitant to I'm the coming declaration to of... I, I, I have, in fact, all this is in my paper, Malaz. I'm yeah. not troubling your lawyer. Just to play the devil's advocate. Sorry? Just to play the other complete extreme side. <laughs> Supposing you declare that there is a sexual identity, as you're saying, yes. as you are saying that you declare a sexual identity. And supposing parliament comes up with a, a DOMA. Yes. DOMA. Yes. You strike it down. DOMA. You strike it down. Why? I, you, so, you have a sexual identity, I'll, 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 but you I'll, will not enter into marriage. I come you back to your lordships and have it struck down. <laughs> <laughs> but Malaz, I, let's, let's, I, I want to say something else to your lordships. That what will happen if you do that? Malaz, I am now, I am here, Malaz, at the center. I am to assist your lordships, Malaz. What will happen is Gaidan will happen if you do that. In your rent relationships, Malaz, you will automatically get the right for the spouse to. What happened in Obershfeld was that under the US, gay people were not entitled to military service. They were not entitled to government service. They were discriminated against queer immigration. None of this is happening to our people here. Apart from immigration, they can enter government service. Nobody asks them a question. They can go to any space they want to go. So we are far more liberal in that sense. The US court was dealing with essentially an illiberal, illiberal environment. We are also dealing with a situation where an individual in her or his capacity is entitled to adopt a child, but merely by dint of the fact that you are in a same-sex relationship, that right to adopt even as a single individual is denied. I agree, but there are people have adopted, Mother, that's not an issue. People have adopted children, even in these relations, even today. That's not, there's no issue at all. There are adoptions today, Mother, that we know of, oh, by same-sex couples. Mr. Sibyl, when they, may I say something? Yes, sorry. 
See, when those adoptions are taking place, they are proceeding on a declaration that one of them is adopting. So it's not a declaration. I agree. I agree. I agree. It's that's true. That's, true. Uh, in that, that's in that context, this uh, uh, one of the circulars which the Chief Justice had flagged had come into being and would be addressed by the additional Solicitor General while appearing for the adoption group. So that's, yes, your lawsuit is right. There, there is, what the uh, circular does is, the circular says that though you are entitled to adopt as a single I, person, I, I, merely by virtue of the fact that two of you are cohabiting together, we'll deny you the That's right. where you incrementally need to well, let's expand. Right. This is precisely my point. Absolutely. That's the point we also That's make. That's the point well, that I am also making. That you should That's not make a right. declaration at this stage, allow this to incrementally expand these rights once you give that identity. That's very important, Malad. Most of these cases, Malad, Ontario versus MNH also deals with the same situation. But the moment you recognize sexual identity, Mr. Sibyl, then how does a court then deny the fact that you are entitled to a you are entitled to a recognition of certain other rights which flow out of that sexual identity? No, Malad, identity. that's for the state to do. This is the problem, Malad. Your lordship says now doing something which the state will do in the in the context of what the state feels is the best interest of the state. So are you saying, if I may try and yes. decipher, that you don't recognize what is sought, but declare that they have a right to sexual identity? Yes. Full I stop. Mean, yes. The rest is up to the political process. Yes. The political process means the democratic process, not yes. really legislation. Yes, yes. There has to be, you know, this, this thing has to play out. Correct. A social awareness. That's right. Some of them can be, sorry, sorry, I mean to Interaction. Yes. Like lights, rights are fleshed out and that's how legislations and laws are made. Correct. And administratively, some of these things can be resolved administratively also. So, so allow it to organically, Malad's, grow instead of an imposition through a declaration. This is my suggestion, Malaj, it's all for your lordships to consider. Mr. Sibyl, are you suggesting that uh, uh, in the appropriate context of the Solicitor General saying that a committee of uh, yes. presided over by the Chief, uh, Cabinet Secretary will look into the administrative issues. So is it your suggestion that if this declaration was to be given by this court, coupled with the administrative aspects which should be dealt with by the committee. And a third aspect would be at times, uh, maybe in a request to the legislature to look into enacting a suitable act to deal with the scenario. Is that what you are suggesting? But, but it's not the third step, but it's not the third step. No. Actually, you should allow the administrative committee to look at innovative solutions to deal with the issue. But that will facilitate the process, Malaj. If you don't do that, give that declaration, it won't facilitate that process. And and uh, uh, what is the apprehension of the third? One is not directing the legislature to do it. That's not uh, what is being said. Well, uh, I, I had in mind was, would the to to call upon the legislature to debate this issue. Well, no, I, I don't think you should, you should do that either. Well, it's okay. my request, well, I don't think that 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 in the context of separation of powers, well, that's not not what should be done by the court. I, I, well, as your lordships have not done it before. Your lordships have what is what have your lordships done in all these cases, Vishaka and others? I'm sorry.
Yeah. So, Maharaj, so what I was saying was, and that is a given, Maharaj, nobody can dispute that fact that they have a separate sexual identity. Nobody can dispute that fact. Even the government has not disputed it. So that's a given, Malaj. You are doing nothing more than what, than the, what the reality is. Now, whether that has got acceptance or not, at what level it has got acceptance, is something that will be decided, Malaj, in another forum. And to what extent that acceptance, Malaj, is to be translated into a legal framework or an administrative framework, all the other issues, Malaj, Quesh, Vishakha, and all are procedural guidelines that your Lordship said. Procedural, not legal. Those are procedural guidelines in all of those cases. They are not substantive law. So, I'll, Malaj, by and large, I have, Malaj, covered a large area. Kindly look at my note, Malaj, now. Give you enough time so that you... Malaj, just the, the first part is perspective. Which is, what is the perspective with which, sorry, Malaj. Lordship has that? Yes. Five Supreme Court judges are being asked to close the debate in Parliament and in the public space through a declaration that same-sex marriages must be accorded the same status as heterosexual marriages. And minorities? Five Supreme Court judges. The Supreme Court. Supreme Court judges. The Supreme Court. Now, when I say five Supreme Court, it's the Supreme Court, Mother. Yes. <laughs> when it is five just. No, we're just sort of clarifying that. <laughs> no, 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 Mother, of course. Even in a judgment Without. of seven to six, well, the decision it's of 13, three to two, Mother, not a judgment of seven. Obersfeld was five to four, it was the US Supreme Court, Mother. I, I, I know that, I know that. When I said Mother's five, I meant Mother's numerically. Yes. <laughs> Minorities of all hues, like minority opinions, are protected from institutional discrimination. But they cannot demand as of right that they be accorded a status that don't, should only be restored through legislation. The ma that marriage is a heterosexual union granted societal approbation over centuries. It is not a historical coincidence. The premises that support the institution of heterosexual unions is a sociological phenomena which has endured for thousands of years. The essence of the petitioner's claim now is that the state must change its definition of marriage. This is the issue. History teaches us that when a paradigm shift of the law is at stake, the judgment of the court reflects its wisdom and restraint, which is predicated upon its understanding of the consequences of such a paradigm shift. In essence, liberty means freedom from executive intrusion into spaces protected by the Constitution and not entitlement to government benefits. This is the perspective with which, Malad, I request your Lordship to look at this issue. Then, Malad, I a quick summary of arguments. The Special Marriage Act of 54 is not violative of 14, 15, 19, 21 by virtue of being limited to heterosexual couples, as under 14 and 15, opposite sex marriages and same sex marriages represent two different classes. This is based on historical evolution of marriage as a social institution and unique dynamics between the partners. The Act is therefore not in violation of 14 and 15. Under 21, there may exist a right to choose one's partner as a function of privacy and dignity. Hence, members of the LGBTQIA plus community are at liberty to choose their partners 
as per the customs and usages as evolved, if any. However, there is no fundamental right to the legal recognition of such unions by the legislature. As of now, the only recognition that is available in law is in respect of unions between man and woman. The act is therefore not in violation of 21. Refer to Puttu Swami, the passages, Malad, I don't have to, your lordships are already aware. Then Malad, I'm very strongly opposed to this reliance on foreign judgments, quite frankly. Foreign judgments, where same-sex marriages are delivered in the context of the socio-cultural environment of the relevant country, and in specific factual contexts. Therefore, they cannot influence the decision-making process in India. However, they provide valuable examples of the following. One, the necessity of public discourse and engagement with the issue of same-sex marriages. And two, incremental changes in law and policy on same-sex marriages and concomitant rights. Well, as I've given, Gaidan refers to it. And then, well, it's uh, Minister of Home Affairs, Fori, and uh, the Constitutional Court of... In all cases, Malaz, there has been huge public discourse, huge. And there are paragraphs after paragraphs that refer to it, Malaz. The legal recognition of same-sex marriages is a matter of for Parliament to reflect and act upon. The LGBTQIA plus community may be declared as a sexual minority just as transgender community is recognized for their separate gender identity. This is another aspect that your lawyers may explore. It's yes. akin to minorities, which must be in a secular constitution, must be given protection. So there are two pronged Mullard's declarations that your lawyers can think of. One, their separate sexual identity, and as a sexual minority, protection of the state. <coughs> well, they are also a sexual minority, mm -hmm. and minorities in a secular state need to be protected. So the protection in a secular state available to minorities generally should also be available to sexual minorities. Minority persecution. In, I would put it in a wider perspective. Minority in a democracy. Every minority in a democracy. Yes, yes, I, I agree, mother. I agree. Yes. I, when I said when secular. You need not. You All right. Hear, there are minorities which are not. You see, not there's a certain connotation. I understand. I, I, I appreciate it's that. I was not. Did yeah, yeah, yeah. minority concept. I, I agree, mother. I was only thinking in the other context. Yes, I agree. Broadly. Broadly. So this, these are two areas your lawyers can think of, mother taking it forward. Now, Malaj, let's come to the... Then, Malaj, the text, purpose, and intention of SMA only contemplates to deal with heterosexual marriages. The court cannot interpret the enactment and declare that the SMA covers same-sex marriages through any process, according to me, misinterpretation. I've written the word interpretation word, recognized by law. it will be completely misinterpreting the statute. In fact, well, one of the questions, and I don't want to waste your lordship's time with asked, when you mm. refer to person in 4-1, what does it mean? Well, when you refer to person in 4-1, at that time they are unmarried. So you can't refer to them in any other way. It's as simple as that. I hope I've made myself clear. You couldn't have referred to them as spouse. Well, they were on, when you talk of two persons, and what it says is they should not have had a spouse. Otherwise, they can marry. Yeah. So persons in 4-1 can only meet persons who are unmarried. Marat. So to <laughs> interpolate into that, the concept of spouse is wholly, wholly alien. You remember that, so I won't take you to the statute, Marat, that's all. Yes. Then Miller's declaration of a substantive right to marry and its legal recognition. Petitioner before the court are seeking a declaration that this court confers on same-sex couples the same rights that are available to heterosexual unions. Recognition of same-sex unions can take place in two ways, either through legislation which confers recognition to same-sex and LGBTQIA unions, or 
through a declaration by the court holding that such unions should be recognized by law. Therefore, the court must consider the following. One, does the fundamental right to choose your partner include the right to marry dehors a legislative enactment recognizing such marriage? Two, if the answer is in the affirmative, then is the state obliged to legislate and recognize same-sex marriages and accordingly confer the same attendant benefits that heterosexual marriages have? Implicit within these two assertions by the petitioners are two assertions by the petitioners. First, that opposite sex and same-sex couples are part of the same class. Well, this is completely, completely conceptually erroneous. Therefore, there can be no discrimination between them under 14 and 15. Second, that a marriage is a union between any two persons, irrespective of their gender and sexual orientation. Hence, the right to marry under 21 includes the right to be legally recognized by the state as such. The union between heterosexual couples recognized within society, even in the absence of law, is a sociological phenomenon, the organic evolution of which has endured thousands of years in different forms. Well, it's, and I won't read it further, I'll just show this to your lordships, that what has been happening in Europe and actually in the, in the developed world over the years is there has been a breakup, an atomization of the family. And because of the atomization of the family, problems have arisen, Mullahs. Divorces take place, people start living with each other. And Mullahs, therefore, the need to regulate came to Europe much earlier than it has come here. The atomization of the family has started here because of the process of economic liberalization and people, people having their own um, uh, dreams to Mullahs uh, follow so to say. So it is this process that needs one recognition, two needs evaluation, and three needs leg legislation. So first recognize, then you evaluate, then you legislate. You don't have a declaration from the court saying, this is what, I, this is what we decide. So therefore, in paragraph six so here, mothers, of this part, consequently, individuals started exercising choices, such as issues of divorce, custody, maintenance, amongst others, were required to be addressed and regulated. This could only happen through the medium of law. Therefore, for the first time in 55, Parliament enacted the Hindu Marriage Act of 1955. Now, well, I heard somebody say in the Oxford Union that, you know, we are a vote bank. Tomorrow, the politicians will have to run after, run after us because we too have votes. This is the dynamics of society and within society. You should allow that dynamics to play out. You have to allow that dynamics to play out. Then, Miller's seven is important from our standpoint. These historical developments in the context of societal and community standards prevailing from time to time demonstrate that heterosexual and same-sex couples were not only perceived as belonging to separate classes, but that the legislature chose not to recognize and regulate heterosexual marriages as distinct from non-heterosexual unions. Therefore, the contention of the petitioners that the court declares same-sex unions and heterosexual unions as belonging to the same class is belied both by history and legislative intent. Because their argument was that this is, and your lordships also mentioned, this has been, this has been there for centuries in India. So in 1955, when the law was enacted, parliament knew and chose not to de declare them alert. That itself gives you, that itself proves the legislative intent that we didn't want to include them here. So both historically and through legislative intent, they don't belong to the same class. They can't. So this whole argument of 14 and 15 is a non sequitur. So then I discussed NALSA, which is gender identity. I don't have to say anything more on that. I've already said what I had to say. Then, Kutuswami, your lordships, Mullahs, I've quoted the paragraph. Your lordships have dealt with Nalsa in Kutuswami. So I've quoted that paragraph. I won't trouble your lordships. Then, human dignity, the aspect of human dignity and privacy, the relationship between dignity and privacy is para 13. 
and then Navtet Johar, which elaborates upon the concept of privacy with reference to an individual's sexual orientation, which is fine. Then privacy in public spaces, para 15 is important. The choice of sexuality is at the core of privacy, both, but equally our constitutional jurisprudence must recognize that public assertion of identity founded in sexual orientation is crucial to the exercise of freedoms. So you need to be, nobody can discriminate you if you publicly, publicly identify yourself. That also is part of privacy. Then Miller's autonomy and privacy. Autonomy and privacy, para 16, are inextricably linked. Each requires the other for its full realization. Their interrelationship has been recognized in Putraswami. Privacy postulates the reservation of a private space for the individual described as the right to be left alone. The concept is founded on the autonomy of the individual. The ability of an individual to make choices lies at the core of the human personality. The notion of privacy enables the individual to assert and control the human element, which is inseparable from the personality of the individual. The inviolable nature of the human personality is manifested in the ability to make decisions on matters intimate in human life. The autonomy of the individual is associated over matters which can be kept private. These are concerns over which there is legitimate expectation of privacy. It has nothing to do, Malaj. See, the moment you cross the boundaries, the contours of privacy, you come into the public space. Within the contours of privacy, you have complete freedom. The moment you go beyond the contour, well, as then societal responses, debates, discussions, acceptance, Give, don't you that absolute right to be recognized. So then, Malaz, sorry. Of, uh, in the absence of an interfaith marriage law, yes. What you are saying is in the absence of an interfaith marriage law, yes, which pro regulates inter caste and interfaith. Could you have gone and said that I am not enabled to make a law? I have a right to marry. You could have you you marry, Malas. Nobody will dispute that. Who prevents you from no. marrying? What you are asking for is not that, Malas. They are married. The problem is not that, Malaj. You can call it by any name, which is why, Malaj, it's really not necessary for your lordship to say marriage is part of 21 or 14. Marriage is, an marriage is a union of people. It's inalienable. I have a right to be together with anybody I want, maybe same sex, maybe heterosexual, maybe anything. This is the problem. It is the recognition which matters. It's not the, the union which, which is a given, Malaj. The heart of the issue is recognition, Malaj.
Now, well, this paragraph 19 at page 9. Consequently, both same-sex and opposite-sex marriages are premised on the same human needs of love. This is the argument. Affection, stability, longevity, legislative regime is built around dynamics that are unique to heterosexual marriages. So too, a new legislative regime for same-sex marriages will have to respond to the unique characteristics and challenges that same-sex couples face. That's what's important, Malat. They will face different challenges. Let us face, assume, for a moment, assume that Parliament makes a law only with reference to LGBTQIA plus unions, as it has done for the transgender community. Would such a law be liable to be struck down on the ground that there can be no separate law for same-sex unions because they belong to the same class as heterosexuals? I submit that such a law, if made, can never be struck down because difficult, different procedures will have to evolve in the unique context of same-sex unions. The consequential issues that are bound to arise when dealing with reference to such unions may not be relevant in the context of heterosexual unions. Therefore, the petitioner's contention that they are being denied equal protection of the law by virtue of them being extend, not being extended, um, excluded from the, being excluded from the SMA is liable to be rejected. The contention is based on an incorrect assumption. Both society and the law must consider them as belonging to unions of the same class without reference to their sexual orientation. Therefore, the exclusion of six SMA is not violative of 14. So this is on the Article 14. Well, that I'm done with that. Now 21. Any form of union between individuals is a matter of choice. Such unions are protected under the right to privacy under 21. This in turn culminates in the right to marry a person of one's choosing. However, it is submitted that beyond the choice of one's partner, is the legislative recognition of such choice, which in itself cannot be a fundamental right for the reasons that follow. The petitioners rely on the following three. Just one minute. It is, it is, it is. That and, and then if you take it slightly word, uh, wider in, yeah. in terms of that concentric circle, yeah. the largest circle, the yeah. broadest argument is there is no fundamental right to claim any legislation. You have a fundamental right, negative rights, positive rights. Negative rights. 
So if they are infringed, you come to court or enforce it. Right. But there is no right to claim a legislation or a legislative That's regime. precisely why we have the Constitution. Precisely for that reason. In an orderly society, you need the rules of the game to be played out on certain fundamentals. And that fundamental law is the Constitution. So you are saying that the drill down of this whole uh, case is that what is being what? claimed is a, a legislation, yeah. a right to... A, a legislative recognition of the essence. That's That's what is the heart of it. Therefore, your submission is really say, okay, go ahead and get married. Yeah. There's no there's no restraining an individual That's right. getting married, even if you belong to the you, same sex. Yes. Actually, but you can't really uh, insist on yes. the I legislature enacting a law. Short of court recognition. Yes, exactly. Actually, the solicitor did say something on that, but you're building on it. And That's right. We always yeah. build millets on the, <laughs> yes, yes. on the basis of what. That's what uh, ultimately all science builds on failures, Mullah. Yes. yes. I'm building on success. If I'm no. looking ahead, I'm standing on the shoulders yes. of the giant, is what he said. <laughs> now, Mullah's Paris 25. Bernard, Bernard Shaw said that. <laughs> yes, I, I was trolled, Mullah's thinking that I am uh, sitting on this side, Mullah's side. But I'm assisting the court, I'm in no side. Para 25. The petitioners rely on the following three judgments of this court. If was... Social acceptability is the test. I'm not sure whether your arguments are socially acceptable <laughs> on the other side. That's the test. That's right. What's the recognition is what's there. <laughs> <laughs> No, we do our best, mothers, to the best of our ability, and we yes, need yes. to take it forward. We need, uh, we need, don't need to be anachronistic, mothers. We we must recognize the reality, uh, you know, both in terms of aspirations as well as on the ground. And ultimately, Mr. Sibyl, the human race always survives on a sense of optimism of a better future. Always, always, always. And that's what we live on as well as judges. Absolutely, absolutely. Absent that, what are we doing our job for? That's you? why we are here, mothers, as partners in this enterprise. Absolutely. Five minutes. The petitioners rely on the following three judgments of this court to assert that a right to marry is recognized under the Constitution, which must be extended to same-sex couples. However, I submit that the contours of the right, this right evolved under specific factual. Well, as none of this relates to same-sex. Your Lordship will remember in Shafin Jahan what happened. That young lady. Can skip that. Actually. Yeah, so we, we all know that. So, Mullahs, then comes to Mullahs very interesting on Puttu Swami. But what your lordships uh, relied upon. The Mr. Sibyl, you know what happens is when you write, and this is really letting out a bit of a secret, when you write, you're also trying to push the paper <laughs> as a judge. If you right. didn't do that, I mean. That's true, that's true. That is true. In everything that you write, you're trying to. No, no, but that's... Push, but, push the limits, so to speak. But that's exactly what should be done, Mullah. So ultimately, the law has to uh, evolve in the context of changing times. And that's what the legal arguments would be also. Yes. We'll take it to a next level. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, Mullah, your lordship talks about... Sorry.
30, my lads, what, what Aristotle said is true even today, my lads. Just I, I just read that quoted by para 30. Greek philosopher Aristotle spoke of a division between the public sphere of political affairs, which he termed as polis, and the personal sphere of human life, termed oik, oikos. This dichotomy may provide an early recognition. This dichotomy may provide an early recognition of confidential zone on behalf of the citizen. And then Aristotle's distinction between the public and private realms can be regarded as providing a basis for restricting governmental authority to activities falling within the public realm. On the other hand, activities in the private realm are more appropriately reserved for private reflection, familial relations, mm -hmm. and self-determination. I won't read further, Malaz. Your Lordship's quotes are the things, but this is rather instructive. Para 31, further the court dwelt upon the right to be let alone. Malaz, let's leave that. Roscoe Pound, we can leave that. And then, Malaz, your Lord. So Para 34, Malaz, after I've quoted all this, Para 34 at page 13, the right to be let alone or left alone, which necessarily contemplates a negative obligation on the state and on society to not interfere with choices that impact no one other than the person making them. However, where the exercise of the right to privacy has a public dimension, the state may create regulations in the larger interests of the community. The right to be left yeah. alone. Yes. <laughs> um, so it is submitted that the legal recognition of marriage goes beyond the private sphere into the public domain it being an institution with ramifications for society at large, to hold choice to be the basis of any form of LGBTQI plus union and their recognition cannot ever be fund a fundamental right. Societal standards evolved over centuries and have a vital role to play in any exercise of recognition by the state. The state has regulated the parameters of choice within the conspect, there's something wrong with us, there should be a full stop, uh, within the conspectus of marriage, whether that be in terms of the number of partners, bigamy, polygamy, or in terms of the age of marriage, this regulation is based on societal propensities, which far better of, which for better or worse, guide the legislature in the choice of its policy. If individual choice or the choice of unions were to be the basis of the grant of legislative status, then any form of union amongst individuals could receive such status. That by law is impermissible because no fundamental right is absolute and the contours of exercise mm -hmm. of each fundamental right are determined by law, but subject to interpretation by the court from time to time in the context of new challenges faced by society as it evolves. Then, well, as I've dealt with Oberschfell, and uh, well, as the four principles, I won't read the judgment, Oberschfell relied upon four principles, and according to me, completely wrongly. Because the four principles were relied upon in the context of Zablocki, which was payment for parental care before you can marry, which has nothing to do with the right, and loving which was inter interracial. And from these two judgments, they extracted the principle that they laid. I just want to... Which was the first one? Zablocki. Ah. Zablocki and then Loving. Those are the loving. two judgments. And both are ir irrelevant to the issue. So, Loving would be... Interracial, inter mother. Yes, akin to intercaste. Because it was, it was heterosexual. But it was as intensely... Yes. But, Malaz, we are in a different... I agree, Malaz, but we are in a different sphere no, altogether. No. Look at social processes. It was as intensely contested. True, true. As intensely... True, true. If I may use the word, you know, shocking or blasphemous. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. That is true, Malaz. I, I'm, I'm just, Malaz, trying to indicate to your lordship, Malaz, the issue was not that at all. Then 38, this is important, because therefore the submission that the right to marry and its recognition in respect of the LGBTQIA plus unions is embedded in 21 and therefore untenable. 
While it is true that those who are part of the community are entitled to choose their partners and declare themselves to be by usage or custom to be married, its recognition would still involve legislation through parliament or the state legislature, as the case may be, since entry five is on the concurrent list. It's exactly Malad's, what my Lord has been Malad's, uh, debating throughout the day. Therefore, while the right to choose one's partner may be within 21, there exists no unqualified right to legal recognition of such marriage by the state. Then foreign judgments, Malad's, Gaidan I have dealt with, I'm not, your Lordship is aware of it. And, uh, and I said, this is ultimately, once you give the recognition, that two-pronged recognition that I'm talking about, then the litigation will go the Gaidan way. Then Gaidan I have dealt with. Obersh fell, Malaz, again. Malaz, I just want to read, if your lordships don't mind, the quotation. Because remember, even in the United mm -hmm. States, it was only in 2003 with the judgment in the Massachusetts case, Mullers, Lawrence. that for the first time it was recognized. That's the Goodrich matter. Goodrich matter. Now, Mullers, I want to just, uh, um, where is, um, where is um, uh, Roberts? Huh? Well, just to give me a minute. Mm -hmm. Please. Well, I'll just come back to page 13, if you don't mind, Mullers. I'm sorry. Yes, Chief. I just wanted to read Chief Justice Roberts, so just a couple of paragraphs, if your Lordship don't mind. Para 37, and just the quotation, Mullahs, if I may read. Yes. But this, is, this court is not a legislature. Whether same-sex marriage is a good idea should be no concern for us, to us. Under the Constitution, judges have power to say what the law is, not what it should be. People who ratified the Constitution authorized courts to exercise neither force nor will, but merely judgment. Although the policy augment, or arguments for excluding, for extending marriage to same-sex couples may be compelling, the legal arguments requiring such an extension are not. The fundamental right to marry does not include the right to make a state change its definition of marriage and a state's decision to maintain the meaning of marriage that has persisted in every culture throughout human history can broad, then hardly be called irrational. In short, our constitution does not enact any one theory of marriage. The people of a state are free to expand marriage to include same-sex couples or to retain historic definition. Partly Holmes's formulation. Yes, partly that. Right. Now, as I was now at... I had finished Gaidan. I'm not going to trouble your lordships. You're aware, fully aware of the judgment. Then Obersfeld versus Hodges have done. Fouri Mullahs, uh, Fouri also. Yes, Fouri, it's what's important, Mullahs, para 52, if your lordship don't mind. Uh, page 18, the quoted portion. Has the public had an opportunity to have its say? For the purposes of the present discussion, I assume that the extent to which the public has been consulted would be a relevant factor in determining the appropriate remedy to be ordered. Even making that assumption, the contention by the state and the amici to the effect that the matter is not ripe for determination by this court cannot be sustained. The stark claim that the public has not had an opportunity to engage with the issue is not, not borne out by the facts. A recent memorandum of SALRC on domestic partnership testifies to prolonged and intensive engagement with the public. The memorandum establishes three things. First, there has been extensive public consultation over a number of years. Secondly, a final SALRC report can be placed before Parliament within a relatively short period. Thirdly, the report can be expected to contain a comprehensive proposal intended to provide appropriate relief, which is in a for format quite different from that which the applicants propose. The matter of the relief to which some same-sex couples are entitled would therefore appear to be ready for prompt consideration by Parliament. The orders to be made by this court should be taken out of this fact. This was the extent of consultation, Willis. You look at Obersfeld, same thing. Look at Fori, same thing. What we are being told now to your lordships is Parliament, don't go to Parliament. Parliament will not do any of this. Please, you do it. 
It is completely inconsistent with what's happened in other jurisdictions. Para 53. It's important to note that the presence of meaningful public engagement is not the same as public consensus. For if it were, the general value of democratic decision making would override individual rights, which is what my Lord Justice Bhatt said, and it's right. You don't have to have consensus on these issues. This is even more apparent in the judgment of the Constitutional Court of Taiwan, which counts as public engagement over a decade's worth of failed legislative attempts to legis legalize same-sex marriages. However, that engagement, which manifests as law commission reports, bills in the legislature, referendums, high court decisions, state legislations, is absent in India. Therefore, it is apparent that while there are liberal democracies, mm -hmm. such as ours, granting legal recognition to same-sex marriages through judicial decisions, such decisions cannot be imported into India without a reference to societal context. So public engagement goes hand in hand with another, uh, with, with another uh, approach, a uh, form of approach. Uh, I know something's wrong here. Countries that have conferred state recognition on same-sex marriages, incrementalism. This is necessarily this necessarily meant steps by the judiciary or the legislature towards the recognition of the rights of same-sex couples either before or after a declaration of marriage equality. For instance, Mexico has really recognized the cohabitation partnership of same-sex couples and their marriage since 2009. At the federal level, Supreme Court of Justice declared as unconstitutional any federal law that considered the purpose of marriage to be procreation. So all that happened, sodomy, Mullers, um, South Africa, and Mullers, you had Satchwell relating to pension rights, you had Detroit relating to parental rights of permanent same-sex life, and then 40, 40 recognized the equal right of same-sex couples. So this has been incremental. It always has been incremental. On the other hand, Portugal gave same-sex couples the right to marriage through legislation, but has not yet bestowed the right to adopt. Similarly, the Belgian parliament in 2003 recognized the right of same-sex couples to be legally married, and later in 2006 granted the right of adoption. So there is no set pattern with respect to the route to legislation of same-sex marriages and a conferral of the attendant rights, depending on the issues of federalism, of the relationship between judiciary and the legislature, and of the synergy amongst law, society, and religion. Countries have taken steps that suit their unique circumstances the best, which is why I say that we should not rely upon these foreign judgments at all. So, Malas, then I quote the order in Nansa, Well, as your Lordship is aware of it, but what's important is what I have said in Para 61 at page 21. And I'll leave it. Therefore, instead of limiting its judgment to the relief prayed for by the petitioners, I submit that this court needs to address the following issues whether the LGBTQI plus community being a sexual minority in a democracy, I changed the word, Malats. The Lord may change that for me. In a democracy, is entitled to be protected even in the absence of a law, given that their sexual orientation is different from heterosexual persons. The necessity of procedures, which recognizes without conferring the status of marriage, the impediments that come in the way of the LGBT unions. Three, the necessity of administrative procedures, as the government has suggested, and guidelines recognizing that sexual orientation is a physiological phenomenon and the same-sex unions involve intimacy outside the heterosexual world and that such unions cannot be discriminated against. The above is possible only when the LGBT community is recognized as a sexual minority in tandem with the recognition of transgenders having a separate and unique gender identity, which now has been recognized by law. Once...
The above is possible only when the LGBT community is recognized as a sexual minority in tandem with the recognition of transgenders having a separate and unique gender identity, which now has been recognized by law. Once the court, through a declaration, recognized the community as a sexual minority having a separate and unique sexual identity, then issues with reference to civil rights, such as adoption, gratuity, surrogacy, can be addressed by government through stratagems which may involve administrative solutions both within the government and the public sector till parliament addresses the issue of legislation the government can through executive actions consider the recognition of certain rights which are necessary in the fulfillment of the aspirations of the lgbt community then well, the next part of it i don't want to deal with because it deals with the special marriage act I don't think that's necessary, Malas. All that I say at the end is, in a way, this moment should be celebrated, that your lordships are at least dealing with the reality of the situation. But that celebration must not result in an overreach. Though it must recognize the reality and set systems in place for the state to move forward. But without moving forward, Mullets, many of these people will be discriminated against. How that is to be done, in what manner it is to be done, Mullets, I think that the government can ponder over it. But as for me, Millers, I think that what they've asked for is not a fundamental right. What they must get is something short of it, but something that's meaningful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr.